Hello everyone and welcome to this let's play of Thief the Dark Project. This is a favorite of mine so I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are as well and let's get started. I will be playing on the hardest difficulty of course and I also uh, will play the training mission because it is part of the story. So here we go. no home, running messages and picking pockets to keep my ribs from meeting my spine. One night I saw a man. Folks just passed him by like he wasn't there. I thought he must have something valuable, so I snuck up on him and made a grab. That's not for you. Please, sir, I'm hungry. Don't tell the hammers, I promise. What is your name, boy? Garrett. You have talent, lad. Let go of me, old man! To see a keeper is not an easy thing. Especially one who does not wish to be seen. We have a need for those as gifted as yourself. If you've grown tired of how you live, then follow me, and we will show you a different way. Leave me alone! As you wish. I caught up with him just before he vanished into the crowd. It was the beginning of a very long education. Of course, in the tutorial mission, you only have to follow instructions, so it shouldn't be a problem. Welcome, young Garrett. In the nearby rooms, I will instruct you in the various skills you will need to survive. Sounds good. Please stay in the entrance area to each room while I explain the room's purpose. When you are ready to begin your lessons, proceed down this hallway to the first room. You must learn how to move unseen. Stay in the shadows. Avoid the light. The indicator on your screen will tell you how visible you are. Try to reach the top of the platform without being seen. Now, what I really like about this game is that there is no sneak mode that makes you invisible or something. Uh, you actually have to do uh, all the sneaking by yourself. Well done. I did not see you approach. Open this door to continue. When the door is near the center of your screen, it will light up indicating that it is selected. To manipulate selected doors and other objects, use them. Good. Proceed down this corridor for your next test. You can check your map at any time. Okay, so right now the map uh, doesn't tell us all too much, but it's not needed for this mission, so whatever. Now you must learn to move quietly. Some surfaces are louder than others when walked upon and moving quickly makes more noise than moving slowly. Listen to your own footsteps to hear how much noise you are making. The instructor will have his back turned. You must get to the top of the platform without being heard. And again, this is all dependent as you, uh, on you as a player. There is no indicator that tells you how uh, much noise you are making. You actually have to listen to your footsteps. <laughs> yeah, I love this game. Very good. I did not hear you traverse the room. Beyond this door is a hallway that will lead you to your next task. This is what makes this uh, one of the greatest stealth games ever. Possibly the greatest. Now get your weapons. To pick up objects, select them by centering them on screen until they light up. Then use them. Choose your weapon now. Try readying your sword and then your bow. You can always put them away again if you need your hands free. Now let's go out to the courtyard for some target practice. Ready your bow. Knock an arrow and draw back the string by holding down the attack button. Make sure you draw all the way back, or your shot will not have full power. Take aim, and when you are ready to shoot, release your attack. See if you can hit one of these targets. Good shot. Keep practicing if you wish. When you are ready to proceed, approach the training dummy and ready your sword. This isn't much of a challenge, of course. 
And uh, some of you who have played the game uh, at release may notice that certain items look a bit different. Uh, this sword, for example. And this is, of course, um, due to the mod you have to install in order to be able to play the game on a modern PC. Uh, but apart from that, the graphics are pretty much like the original, with a higher resolution, of course. But yeah, I think the game uh, still looks pretty good, considering how old it is. Swing at the target with the attack button. A quick tap will give you a slash. Move the tip of your sword to the left of the target for a left slash, and to the right of the target for a right slash. Hold the attack button down, then release for an overhead swing. Try both slashes and the overhead swing on the practice dummy. Good job. You're ready for a live opponent. To practice against your partner, enter the cobbled sparring area. And there are other mods that um, replace all the textures of the game, but I actually do like the original graphics. Well done. Keep sparring if you wish. When you are done, leave the sparring area. That's enough sparring for today. Please walk over to the table. Would you care for some refreshment before we move on, young Garrett? Please pick up all of the items on this table. Cycle through your inventory to see the objects you have in your pockets. Once an object is displayed, you may use it. Have something to eat if you wish. Then you may proceed. The next test is waiting on the other side of the metal door. The door is locked. But the key from the table will open it. To unlock the door, select the key in your inventory. Center the door on screen until it lights up. Then use the key on the door. Good. Now head down this hallway to get to your next test. I think it's kind of pathetic that you have to teach me how to open a door with a key. <laughs> that doesn't seem too difficult. Now, there is an uh, easter egg uh, right over there behind the gate. Um, I can't reach it now, but if you don't know it, I'm sure you can find it on YouTube somewhere. Now you will learn new movement skills. First, climb the rope by jumping onto it. Move while looking up or down to climb up or down the rope. Turn to change your facing. If you jump again, you will release the rope. Now climb the rope to get to the top of the platform. Well done. Run and jump across the gap to the other side of the stream. Good jump. This obstacle is easy to climb if you know how. First, move close to the wall. Next, jump to grab the edge of the wall and pull yourself up. Good job. I am most pleased with your progress. You have passed the last test for today. If you wish, you may stay to practice your climbing and jumping, or swimming, ducking, leaning or crawling. When you are finished, you may return to your chambers by going through that red door. Farewell. The Keepers were training me to be one of them, but I found other uses for those skills. And that's the end of the training mission. Right now. Okay, so that was the tutorial. Now let's have a look at the first real mission of the game. I have a simple job planned for this evening. Break into a guarded mansion, steal another fat nobleman's priceless trinket, and leave quietly. Lord Bafford is out of town, and rumor has it that the captain of his house guard went with him as a bodyguard. The time is ripe for a bit of burglary. The front gate of Lord Bafford's manor is always guarded, and the main street is far too exposed. But Cuddy tells me there's a better way in. Around to the side, more out of the way. One guard, 
and likely no witnesses to complicate matters. The piece Cuddy wants is a scepter, silver, jewels, the usual adornments. It should command a high price. Bafford, like most of his kind, probably keeps his treasures on the top floor of the place, close to his heart and far from his servants. No point in waiting. I have Cuddy's old sketches of the place and everyone who's going to be asleep inside already is. It's time to begin. Now the first mission is of course very simple. Get in, get the loot, get out and don't kill anybody. And your starting money for this mission is actually 300, but because we picked up that first uh, piece of loot in the training mission it is now 350, but it doesn't really matter. Because the mission um, is very easy, you don't need a lot of equipment. But you might as well uh, spend your money anyway, because it doesn't carry over to the next mission. So yeah, here we go. Hmm. A few too many to try to get by here. Yeah, we won't be using the front entrance. I could look at my map again, but um, this doesn't tell us all too much either, and it's not really needed. I know this mission by heart. I used to play this game a lot, but as a little kid um, I never could make it past the first two missions, <laughs> so I just played those two missions over and over again. And I remember um, the rest of the game fairly well, but uh, the first two missions I know by heart. <laughs> Could you possibly be any more helpful? Sneaking up on him is very easy because obviously he's drunk. You could also knock him out, but it's not necessary. Now for any of you who um, are unfamiliar with the game, um, maybe I should explain what's actually going on. <laughs> uh, the Keepers, who were training our protagonist Garrett in the beginning, they are a sort of secret organization and um, what they do is they want to keep the balance uh, as they say, and since I'm in here, I might as well pick up something for myself. And uh, make sure that no single faction in in the city ever gets too powerful and uh, takes just everything for themselves. And they wanted Garrett to join them, but then later he left, and now he's a thief. Inside at last. But we will be seeing the keepers again later. What do you mean? What's wrong with us? Well, we're fine. But I've been thinking we should watch the outsides more. That's stupid. People to worry about there on the inside. No, then you catch them before they get inside, you taffer. Oh. <laughs> Gotta love this conversation. Again, you could knock those guards out, but here in this dark corridor, you can pass him by and he won't see you. I think those two guards actually have the same voice actor as Garrett, Stephen Russell, who is a brilliant, brilliant voice actor. He also did some voices for Skyrim, but in this he is just fantastic. He is what defines the character of Garrett.
there are a lot of letters and notes in the game that you can read and most of them are actually pretty important because they give you hints as to where uh, to find loot or how to avoid security systems and so on. Some of them are just um, decoration but they add atmosphere and depth to the game so yeah. I'm not going to read all of them though, that would simply take too long. Just the important ones. Because later on I may actually need them in order to find uh, some of the loot. Now, I know there is a guard uh, up ahead and I'll just wait here until he, uh, he passes by. That's something you just have to do in this game sometimes. Stand in a dark corner and wait for the opportune moment. And that's what makes it fun, really. For me, at least. Of course, on a lower difficulty you could um, just run through the entire level and also kill everybody. Um, but, yeah, I think it's a lot more fun to play the game like this. And also, on the highest difficulty, you're not allowed to kill anyone anyway. What's there? Nothing making noise now. I probably won't be able to play the game perfectly. I have played it a lot, but it also has been a while since I have last played. So sometimes, especially in the later missions, I will just have to knock out a few guards and I probably won't be able to get all the loot in every single mission. In this one I will. This mission is by far the easiest. It actually is sort of another tutorial mission, I think. room you have to be extra careful because the floor is quite loud <laughs> when walked upon and those guards up here they are a lot stronger than the other ones downstairs of course there is no uh, no point in fighting them since you are not allowed to kill so yeah they detect me, then I'm in trouble. But of course I will uh, play the game as, as well as I can. I'll do my very best. <laughs> But I also don't think that Garrett would um, go out of his way and risk his life um, to get every single little piece of gold. He would try and get as much as he can, of course, but um, yeah. So in a way I think I'm uh, kind of role-playing here, <laughs> trying to do what, uh, what I think this character would actually do. The reason why you're not allowed to kill is because Garrett um, says uh, that uh, 
uh, a thief, um, a good thief, um, he doesn't need to use violence. And uh, that he is a thief and not a murderer. But, um, yeah, and I agree with that, but I think he would be uh, willing to uh, sometimes knock out a few guards um, rather than risk being detected and killed. So, let's put out those torches. And for those of you who don't know the game, yes, we have water arrows in this <laughs> that can um, extinguish uh, fires and torches. And it's not even the most, uh, it's not even the craziest invention <laughs> in the game. <laughs> but it is creative. Come on, turn around you. Hmm. Come on now. I could sneak past him, but it would be quite risky. Yeah, there you go. One knockout, I think, is acceptable for this mission. <laughs> it's a throne room. How pretentious can you get? Here we go. Again, just waiting for the guard to walk by. And that's another great thing about the game, the way you can um, use the sound of the footsteps of your enemies to determine where they are and how much time you have. To just <laughs> it's a very fun game I wonder if he reads them or if it's just for show and then this scroll there's a hint towards Victoria, who is a character uh, we will meet later on in the game. <laughs> it's interesting. I already have um, enough loot uh, to complete the mission, but like I said, in this I want to get everything. Oh. <laughs> that was a close one. Now, those guards here, uh, they are not exactly very vigilant. So, it is uh, rather easy, easy to stay uh, undetected. But if they were to detect you, then... And they actually... Um, of course, they will uh, chase you. But even if they lose you again, they will be um, more on edge from then on. So it is always advisable to stay undetected the entire time. Which again is really easy in this first mission. In the next one, not so much. So now we are almost done, just have to pick up a few things here and there and of course 
find an exit. Since I know this mission so well, I know where all the guards are and uh, what way they're gonna go. I can run around and uh, yeah, run around without worrying too much. If I didn't know the mission, then I'd have to be a lot more careful and what I see there, and actually observe, uh, observe, observe the guards uh, oh well. to find out uh, what they're gonna do. And I will have to do that in the later missions because I know I don't know them uh, as well, and they are a lot more complicated and a lot more difficult. Who is there? Is someone there? Right. So that is all the loot there is to get in this mission, and we have everything else we need. When I say everything, it's really just the scepter <laughs> that we need. Nothing else to do but to get out. And conveniently, the exit is right here. So, first mission complete. And that went really well, actually. We have all the loot. Uh, we only had to knock, knock out a single guard, and 15 minutes also isn't too bad, I think, for this mission. So, I will end the video here. I hope you will continue watching, and until next time, take care.